This is episode 30 of our talk, and today we are going to discuss comparisonitis. Yes. You wake up, you pick up your phone, and you start scrolling. Sounds familiar? Well, for me, that has been, has been a reality for a while. But what can happen to us as artists when so many people showing their creations online? It is called comparisonitis, a negative way to downgrade yourself and your art. I think this is something that happens with a lot of artists. And I admit that I also fell into this trap and it literally debilitated me in progress. Social media is flooded with people who show their work. Some are professionally trained artists, many are hobbyists, and often you see those who shout out loud what they sold, that they sold, and that they have commission after commission after commission. So you just start out full time. And you might feel why that artist has those commissions or is selling so much. And, it, and, you, and you are not. You might even feel, how is that possible? Because my work is way better. You might think, how am I not accepted for that exhibition? And those works are. Well, you deeply feel your work is absolutely worth being there too. That is a feeling you do not want to have. Because it paralyzes. And you will have difficulty continuing with your work or start copying other artists, wishfully thinking it will be successful. I never did that and never will. However, it has happened many times in art history, especially with modern art, like artists as Rothko, as de Kooning, as Modigliani. Forgers started copying work or painting the topics as much wanted as the much much wanted artist because their art didn't sell don't do that don't go there be your own artist own your work because let me tell you a little secret life shown on social media is not real life you don't know how successful people are you have no clue how much money they asked for their work and you don't know if that is even consistently or just a one-off. And then, does it matter? No, it doesn't. So, when I started as a full-time artist, I fell into that trap. But soon I decided to be my own artist, no matter what. To diligently work on my art, to continue growing. And to be happy and grateful that I can also sparks your confidence because that feeling of comparing my art was not a nice feeling it made me decide to step out of comparisonitis all the way and to be a fulfilled artist with her own heart happy having a lovely life that i enjoy and working with focus on what i have to say in this world with my art how i can serve through my art another topic for another day so if you're dealing with this you can do the following to stop comparing first of all nothing has meaning unless you give it one what i mean by that is that if you see someone showing work that has been sold and yours isn't don't give it a meaning because what you tell yourself is that your work apparently isn't good enough or you are not good enough. It doesn't matter what other people or other artists do or show in their timeline. Stop comparing yourself or your art with theirs. It is the proved way to slam yourself down. And why on earth would you do that? And I know it's not easy. It's not easy, but you can do it. You can. If I can, you can. So step away from social media. 
can only post and engage with people who like and love your work. This will help you to really focus on your audience and grow a relationship. That's what this social media is good for. And even when you mention people who tap the heart only as an Instagram, mention them and thank them for loving your work. Show up for yourself and your art. What I just said. You can be trained, but that doesn't mean you stop growing your skill. That is a forever, lifetime, ongoing process. That is not only growing your art skill, but also growing yourself as a human being. So set out time daily to paint or draw. Take a sketchbook with, with you if you are into that and enjoy making sketches or scribbles of ideas you want to work on. And next I would suggest starting by following artists you admire, who you know are further ahead of you or using a style you want to master. Learn from them, absorb their work and thoroughly enjoy it. A growth mindset is the step to conquering difficult things in your art. If you are a hobby artist and a professional takes the time to give you some feedback to improve the painting you placed online, take that in. Embrace it and be super grateful because they don't do if they do not see, you can grow. I personally do this sometimes when I see real potential in the work. It comes natural to me and I like to help people move forward. I know it's not easy to accept. Especially when the whole timeline is blowing up in ahs and awes and telling you how brilliant you are. Don't try to slam the professional down. It is not only arrogant to do so, it is a missed opportunity to ask further questions. I bet they will never ever respond to you anymore after you slam their honest criticism to help you grow further down. They won't. And last, certainly not least, be grateful. That attitude of gratitude is exceptionally powerful. And so be grateful for your skill. Be grateful for those artists you can learn from, whether they give a comment in your timeline or whether you follow them and see the work they create. I personally love it. I do that. I absorb it with all the cells in my body. I enjoy looking at them. I want to learn. I'm open to that. And another thing, smile. Especially when you do not feel like it. Smile when you notice success from another artist online and like it. Congratulate them. Step out of comparisonitis. Be your own artist. Embrace it. Grow and be happy with your art. Thank you for listening. And remember, art is the cradle of your soul. So next episode, I probably have a guest. I'm not sure yet which of the two, depends, but it will be a very lovely, exciting, and for you purposely, purposeful interview. Speak to you next week, see you next week, and have a lovely, lovely, productive week with your art. Bye.